Hi friends, good morning. I am choosing to do a read aloud this week. Um, these books are hilarious. I love to read these books out loud and I've read several of them when I was teaching third grade. So I hope that you enjoy. I um, chose this one because it is October and in a few weeks we will be celebrating Halloween. So I'm going to be reading Mrs. Patty is Batty. And this is part of the My Weirder School series. I'll just read a few chapters each day and send you the link. I hope you enjoy. Mrs. Patty is Batty. Chapter one is called Mischief Night. There's the picture too. My name is AJ and I hate school. Well, I have to tell the truth. There is one thing about school that I really love, dismissal that's when we get to go home. Don't forget to wear your Halloween costumes tomorrow, Miss Patty cackled over the loudspeaker just before the three o'clock bell rang. Halloween is my favorite holiday. She's not kidding. Mrs. Patty celebrates Halloween all year long. There are always cobwebs and spiders covering her desk. She wears earrings that look like little skeletons and she always has candy in her office lots of candy. I like Mrs. Patty. She's the secretary at elementary school. That means she sits in the front office all day and makes announcements over the loudspeaker. Friday is pizza day, she will say. Or Miss Laser, someone mop up the throw up in the vomitorium. Or will the children who left their jackets in the playground please remove their clothes? Being a school secretary is like being a DJ. That is a cool job. I grabbed a piece of candy and ran out the front door of elementary school with my friends, Ryan and Michael. Free at last. What should we do for mischief night tonight? Asked Ryan, who once ate a piece of a sheet seat cushion on the school bus. Let's TP somebody's house, said Michael, who never ties his shoes. Yeah, I don't know if you know this or not, but the night before Halloween is mischief night. That's the night you go out and do mischief, so it has the perfect name. And TP stands for toilet paper. On mischief night, you go out and throw toilet paper all over people's trees. That's the first rule of being a kid. Whose house should we TP, I asked. How about Miss Daisy's house? Ryan suggested. Miss Daisy is our teacher. Nah, Michael said, we'd get in big trouble. How about Mr. Klutz's house? Ryan suggested. Mr. Klutz is our principal. Nah, Michael said, we'd get in even bigger trouble. Speaking of trouble, guess who ran by us at that very moment? It was the most annoying person in the history of the world, little Miss Perfect Andrea Young. She is in our class and has curly brown hair. She thinks she is so smart. What's the rush, Andrea? Asked Ryan. I have to finish my homework before ballet class, Andrea said. Why don't you do your homework after ballet class? Michael asked. After ballet class, I have my soccer and my cooking class. Andrea takes classes in everything. If they gave a class in going to the bathroom, she would take that class so she could get better at it. I hate her. But seeing Andrea gave me the greatest idea in the history of the world. Let's TP Andrea's house, I told the guys. AJ, you're a genius, said Ryan. Chapter two, the TPing of Andrea's house. After dinner, I told my parents I was going down the street to Ryan's house. Ryan told his parents he was going down the street to my house, but me and Ryan didn't go over to each other's houses at all. We both went to Andrea's house. Our parents didn't have to know we were going out for a mischief night, but Michael couldn't come. He was grounded for pulling the arms off his sister's doll. Me and Ryan each brought a roll of toilet paper in our backpacks. This is gonna be great. Ryan whispered as we hid behind a car across the street from Andrea's house. Andrea's gonna wake up in the morning and find the trees in her yard are covered in toilet paper. I couldn't stop giggling. 
It will be the greatest day in the history of the world, I said. It was starting to get dark out, but we still had to be careful because we didn't want to get caught. My friend Billy, who lives around the corner, told me that if you get caught TPing somebody's house, the police put you in jail with no toilet paper. Yuck, but Billy is a big liar anyway. Me and Ryan tiptoed to Andrea's front lawn like we were spies on a mission. It was cool. Be careful not to spit on the ground, I whispered as we pulled the rolls of toilet paper out of our backpacks. Why not, Ryan asked. You don't want to leave any DNA evidence, I said. They could scoop up our spit and prove it came from us. Good thinking, he agreed. I'm in the gifted and talented program at school, so I'm constantly thinking up genius stuff like that. Andrea is in the gifted and talented program too, of course. There's a really big tree in Andrea's front yard. It has a lot of branches, so it's perfect for hanging toilet paper. We decided to loop the toilet paper over the high branches first. After that, we would drape it over the low branches until the whole tree was covered. Okay, I said, once we were in position. Ready, aim, fire! I threw my roll of toilet paper as high as I could. Ryan threw his roll of toilet paper at the same time. Both rolls went sailing up into the tree, but there was just one problem. Those toilet paper rolls didn't unroll. One of the toilet paper rolls bounced off Andrea's house. The other one got stuck in the tree somewhere. It never came down. Bummer in the summer. What did we do wrong? Ryan asked. I guess we should have unrolled them a little before we threw them, I said. Now you tell me, said Ryan. We were going to pick up the toilet paper roll and try again, but suddenly a light went on inside Andrea's house. Andrea stuck her head out the window. Me and Ryan hid behind a tree. Shh. Ryan whispered. I don't think she saw us. Daddy, I heard Andrea yell. Somebody is outside throwing stuff at our house. Run for it, I told Ryan. We didn't stop running until we got home. Chapter three, three zombies. The next day was October 31st, my favorite day of the year. Do you know why October 31st is the favorite day of the year? I'm not going to tell you. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Because it's Halloween and that's my favorite holiday. Well, I guess my favorite holidays are my birthday and Christmas because I get presents. But on Halloween you get candy, which is almost as good as getting presents. Halloween is so great. Think about it. All you have to do is walk around in a silly costume and people give you free candy. What could be better than that? Hey, all year long they tell us not to take candy from strangers, and then Halloween comes and you have to. What's up with that? Anyway, it's a whole holiday devoted to getting candy. Whoever thought up Halloween was a genius. If you ask me, that guy should get a Nobel Prize. That's a prize they give out to celebrate the invention of the first bell. When I marched up the steps to school, Mrs. Patty was standing in the hallway. She was dressed up like a witch. She had a long bent nose with a huge wart on it. How did that wart stay on? She must have glued it or something. It was gross. I'll get you, my pretty, she shrieked, waving her broomstick at this girl named Annette, and your little dog too. I don't even have a dog, Annette told her. The front steps were filled with kids dressed as Spongebobs and Batmans and Oompa Loompas and all kinds of other weird creatures. Michael was wearing his Pee Wee football uniform and he had an ax sticking out of his helmet with fake blood running down the side. It was cool. What are you supposed to be? Mrs. Patty asked him. I'm a football player, Michael said. Why do you have an ax sticking out of your helmet? I'm a zombie football player. Ooh, that's scary, said Mrs. Patty. Ryan was wearing his hockey uniform and he had an ax sticking out of his helmet with fake blood running down the side. Don't tell me, Miss Patty said to him. You're a zombie hockey player, right? How did you know, asked Ryan. Lucky guess, she said. What are you supposed to be, AJ? 
I was dressed up like a penguin who was wearing a space helmet that had an ax sticking out of it and fake blood running down the side. Penguins are cool. I'm a killer zombie penguin from outer space, I told her. Ooh, that's very scary, said Mrs. Patty. Be sure to come trick-or-treating at my house after school. I'm going to have more candy than anyone in town. My address is 176 Norman Road. We'll be there, I said. We were putting our backpacks into our cubbies when little Miss I Know Everything and her equally annoying crybaby friend Emily came in. Andrea was dressed up like a ballerina, so of course Miss Showoff had to spin around on her toes to let everybody know she could dance. What is her problem? There are the three boys. And here is Andrea. Emily was dressed up like a queen. She had a crown on her head and this long robe that trailed behind her on the floor. What's up with that? It's called a train, Emily told us. No, it's not, I said. A train is something you ride in that goes choo-choo. Everyone laughed, even though I didn't say anything funny. I thought those girls' costumes were lame. They weren't scary at all. It would have been a lot cooler if they had axes sticking out of their heads like us. What are you boys supposed to be? Emily asked me and Ryan and Michael. None of your beeswax, I told her. We're zombies, Ryan said. I don't think children should be allowed to wear violent costumes on Halloween, Andrea said. Can you possibly be any more boring? I asked her. You're dumbheads, said Andrea. We are not. R2. We went back and forth like that for a while until I had to say, so is your face, to Andrea. Anytime anyone says something mean to you, just say, so is your face, to shut them up. That's the first rule of being a kid. Hey, Arlo, said Andrea. I brought a present for you. She calls me by my real name because she knows how much I hate it. Ryan and Michael started giggling. Ooh, Ryan said, Andrea brought AJ a present. They must be in love. When are you going to get married? Asked Michael. If those guys weren't my best friends, I would hate them. Andrea opened her backpack and took out a roll of toilet paper. You must have dropped this outside my house last night, Andrea said. I guess you were having a bathroom emergency. I hate her. Why can't a truck full of toilet paper fall on her head? Andrea handed me the roll. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I had to think fast. I wasn't at your house last night. I lied. I was at my class class. Class class? She asked, what's that? It's a class that makes you better at taking classes, I told her. You should take it. There's no such thing as a class class, said Emily. Hey, Emily, I said, pointing under her desk. Look under there. Underwear, I asked. Ha, 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 I yelled. Emily said underwear. Everybody cracked up because I made Emily say underwear. It was hilarious. Anytime you can get somebody to say underwear, you should get the Nobel Prize. You're mean, Emily said. Then she started crying and running out of the room. Emily is weird. Finally, our teacher, Miss Daisy, came in. Enough chit-chat, she said. Miss Daisy was dressed up as a giant brown ball. Only her head, arms, and legs were sticking out. What are you supposed to be, Miss Daisy? Everybody asked. Guess. A basketball? Guess Ryan. Nope. A giant poop? Guess Neil, who we call the nude kid, even though he wears clothes. Nope, Miss Daisy said. I'm a big bonbon. Bonbons are these chocolate treats Miss Daisy loves. That's a great costume, Miss Daisy, said Andrea, who never misses the chance to brown nose a grown up. Oh, this is no costume, Miss Daisy said. I ate so many bonbons that I turned into one. I'm pretty sure she was kidding. <laughs>